Dr. Sebi, I, uh, since uh, having been introduced to you, I've uh, bellowed the, the virtues of sea moss, as you have. And, but I'm having a great deal of difficulty finding fresh sea moss in this country. Can you, A, elaborate on the benefits and the virtues of sea moss, and secondly, uh, perhaps help me I have find some fresh sea moss yeah, in this Very country. good. Thank you. Uh, sea moss is known scientifically, there we go again, chondroscripsus, am I right? Sea moss comes from the ocean. It locks onto a rock, onto a rock. And from that rock, it receives its nutrients. Dr. C.B., how could that be possible? A plant hold on to a rock? Yes. Scientists have yet to understand how could a plant hold on to a rock and then give you food. But you know what it did? They invented a word. This is the word. A 15-letter word. They call it anthroporosis. Now dig that. They don't understand the workings of God, but they're going to give it a name. That a plant has the ability to convert a solid oxide substance into a liquid digestible substance. They call it anthroporosis. Sea moss does that. And every plant does that. But sea moss has iodides, bromides, it has all of the minerals, phosph phosphorus, which is good for the thyroid gland, which is good for the endocrine system, and it's going to give you energy. And it has muscle food. They call it manito, sea moss. Where do we get fresh sea moss? Incidentally, like the man... <laughs> The man made pe peppermint, and he made aloe vera. He, he made noni juice. He made vitamin C out of acerola berry. But well, guess what he did in Boston? And you guys don't know it, and it's dangerous. The man went to the ocean and got a piece of sea moss because he knows that sea moss grows in the ocean where the sea is in constant motion. Sea moss doesn't go where the sea stands still. It has to be in motion, and sea moss grows. So this man in Boston went and got pieces of sea moss, put it in this brine with salt on a machine, and he moved it. The, the machine is constantly moving, and lo and behold, the sea moss grows very thick, very thick and very fast. And when you get a little bit of it and you put it in the pot, it gives you a whole lot of mucilage. The natural sea moss doesn't give you a whole lot of mucilage. And the talus of the sea moss, I mean the little strings, thin, thin, thin like this, very thin, just like this. But the other one is three times the size. And the other one, three times the size, it always has salt on it. Natural sea moss has no salt on it. And it gives you energy. Where are you going to get it? Well, we are important sea moss. We have a whole box of fresh sea moss in Chicago where I just left to come and see you because Mr. Gray said, wait, drop Chicago and come to Philadelphia. Well, I did. And I had just received a shipment of sea moss. My brother owns boats that travel the Caribbean all the way to Colombia and Venezuela and he always sees sea moss on top of the ocean, it looks like gold. He would harvest it and bring it to me. And since Mr. Charles Gray is head of the Genesee School, we will be collaborating now to facilitate these things to you. You will get fresh sea moss because 
I will be sending it to him. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And what the brother asked is a very good question. All of you males should drink a lot of sea moss. All of the females too, because it strengthens the connective tissues. Oh, yes, it does. And according to your, not according, but your reproductive organs would definitely love it. Women in Honduras use the sea moss to give themselves a douche with. And you'd be surprised what you feel.